Welcome to a new series on the Gentleman Ultras YouTube channel. This is called Those Moments in Calcio and I'm your host Richard Hall as always and I'm joined today by Wayne Girard. Uh, this is slightly different, yes you can see us. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or not but yeah we're, we're looking to really push forward some, with some new content on our, on our YouTube channel and this is certainly one of those uh, things where we're going to be reflecting back over some of those moments in Italian football that you know made us love it as much as uh, as much as we do and so without further ado I think that not many people even an Inter fan like myself um, can argue that this moment from Francesco Totti is simply just one of the best. Un duello di testa con Favalli. Favalli Quindi, sempre preciso e puntuale di testa. Tutti i rinvii praticamente di Doni sono diventati palla dell'Inter. Cordoba, Si Maria, fermato, c'è Totti che può spingere di nuovo il contropiede, attaccato da Cambiasso, riesce ad andare via, poi salta anche Si Maria, insiste ancora Totti, lo aspetta Materazzi, Totti si porta quasi in zona tiro, Totti si è liberato, pallonetto, Francesco, Totti, un gol pazzesco, pazzesco per il 2 a 0. Grande, grandissimo gol, perché ha puntato l'avversario. Si sono mossi molto bene i suoi compagni che hanno permesso a lui di portare sempre palla e poi dal limite dell'area ha fatto un pallonetto straordinario col giro giusto a scavalcare il portiere, bellissimo questo gol della Roma. Pazzesco gol di Totti che non è nuovo a questi colpi, a questi cucchiai, pallonetti, chiamateli un po' come vi pare, lo fece con l'Empoli, l'ha fatto con la Lazio in un derby, l'ha fatto spesso Totti. Giulio Cesar si è steso per tutta la sua lunghezza ma non ci è arrivato e devo dire grandissima sportività del pubblico dell'Inter che applaude il gol di Francesco Totti grandissima sportività sì questo è, è un bel segnale sicuramente perché prima della partita invece non l'avevano trattato benissimo ma davanti a, a un gesto tecnico del genere è giusto applaudire un gol bellissimo questo Molto perché bello. non era tanto fuori il portiere vedi? no no era, era all'interno dei, dei 5 metri dell'area piccola So Wayne, I mean, look, that, that goal, we can talk about that more later and we're certainly going to, but before we get to there, lots of people have seen this goal, lots of people remember that goal, even I love that goal, bizarrely, but Inter and Roma came to play, that was in October uh, 2005, and um, you know, when Roma come to San Siro, what state are they in? They're in a volatile state, uh, I think most Roma fans would agree, where they're going through a slew of different managers. We've got Ether Capello leaves. I think we all were, you know, from this era will bitterly remember the way in which he left where he's, I don't believe he's being paid by Rosella Sensi. There's, there's that financial issue, I think maybe with other uh, players and staff in the team as well. And when he walks out, he takes a couple players such as Emerson with him uh, to Juventus and therefore you know, Juventus goes on this crazy rise and Roma, meanwhile, is stuck kind of in the mud. And if you just look at some of these managers, if you take a quick look, it will say Cesare Prandelli was the Roma manager, which uh, he was about to come. He may have actually already been contractually obligated, but tragically, his wife passes away. And Prandelli, of course, never assumes that post, which would have been really something to see. And there was even more to it where Cassano was to go in exchange for Miccoli, and if you can imagine a trident of Nicoli, Montella, and Totti, that would have been really something. And Rudy Bowler steps in, not a good job. Gigi Del Neri, same thing, no stability, just up and down. And I think that might be to be expected in that state. And uh, Bruno Conti is a caretaker, and things don't really start to head in an upward trajectory until Luciano Spalletti takes the reins, and he does a phenomenal job. Roma goes on to win, um, I believe it was 10 or maybe 11 matches in a row or they were unbeaten. And Spalletti seems like this dream out of nowhere and something that might epitomize that, that, uh, that start or that rebirth is that goal against Inter where um, even the commentators say, he, I remember him saying that this was a bewitched uh, pitch out there at the San Siro. It's like, what was happening? You know, and Roma just gets off to this incredible start. So it becomes this monumental goal. And uh, Rich, who were, you know, who were some of those big players that were out there for Inter at the time? Those legends, right? Yeah, it was. Well, this is all, you know, this season's synonymous in Italian football. You know, you've got 
Calciopoli is about to happen. Um, you know, it's it's all going to blow up, and at the lowest of the low, Italy are going to go and win the World Cup at the end of this. And and Inter um, was was really building something back then. Uh, you know, you look at that, and they would go on this season. I mean, when you look at the uh, Champions League, okay, it was the quarterfinals, the Coppa uh, Super Coppa Italiana. They won that. They end up going on to win the uh, the Coppa Italia itself. And of course, you know, uh, in, in strange circumstances, they, they win Serie A. Uh, but this team that I was looking back over this, and there's something that really always amuses me about this team and always has. And it always reminds me of a player that I always think still underrated at Inter. When you look down the list, I mean, we'll turn to talk about probably Francesco Toldo later on. Um, but, they, you know, Julio Zazar played back up this season. That's incredible. You've got that back line and Materazzi, Samuel, uh, Zanetti, that would go on to form the basis of the treble winning squad. The midfield, you know, you're looking at the likes of obviously Stankovic, again, and it goes on to, to win the treble later on. But then you had the likes of Figo, Varon, uh, Cambiasos, uh, Santiago Salali, which is just all crazy. And the front men, you've got Adriano, you've got Rekova, you've got Obafemi Martins. Um, but one guy who went on to, to do so well was Julio Cruz. And you know, Julio Cruz, 21 goals in all competitions that season. He's Inter's top scorer. Um, for me, this Inter squad has a really big place in my heart because it's the real what... Mancini's Inter were uh, really special for me. I thought they, the players that they had, the players that they brought in in the, in the coming years really was the building blocks to Inter getting back to doing something big. And, you know, you, this season was exactly that. Um, that squad was really meant to show... Juventus, that there was, you know, almost like we see today in some respects, that this was the beginning, well, supposed to be the beginning uh, of something big. And But, you know, you look at this game where Inter go on, and we'll talk a little bit about the game itself in a minute, but, you know, Inter hadn't got off to the best start despite all this. They'd been beaten by Palermo. They'd been beaten by Juventus. OK, when you look, you could also say, yeah, at the same time, they've got six, seven wins. But who against? Treviso. You know, it's okay. Expected to win. Lecce expected to win. Chievo expected to win. Fiorentina at this time expected to win. Livorno and Udinese. The actual big tests at Juventus. And then obviously the Roma come to town. And um, yeah, well, this was another game in which, I mean, I'm sure, you know, your memories of the game here. I mean, you can take us through it, but, you know, it, it didn't work out for, uh, for Inter on this day. Yeah, yeah, and that's, uh, I think you make a really good point where Inter starts to really pick up the pace where they'll become a dominant side in, in Serie A. And this is kind of like the very start of the battle, you know, following Calciocoli between Inter and Roma, where for like the next several years, Roma will continuously, you know, and regretfully always finish second place, whereas Inter will start a dynasty. And that becomes epitomized in uh, the Champions League victory. And to, to run you back through this match, so it starts off, actually, Inter looks pretty strong. You can see Zanetti out there pulling the strings. And uh, Alexander Doni, who uh, many Roma fans will remember for brilliant saves, but char unfortunately characteristic mistakes at vital times. And that will actually be the last here, uh, the last of Inter's goal, the fifth goal of this match, which ends 2-3. And Montella gets Roma off to a good start, a nice left-footed goal. Uh, you know, he was a really brilliant left-footed player. He's going to win the Capo Canoniere sometime around this, uh, around this year. It might be in 2006-7 where he wins it, so it might be the following year. But um, nevertheless, and then Inter starts out strong. You can see Stankovic has a goal, which is taken back for offsides. And then, uh, you know, it's, it's still 1-0. And then, of course, Totti comes across the pitch. He starts almost like ballerina dancing. And they're giving him that space, right? Because you don't know what he's going to do because he has three players in front of him. And then he takes that step inside. And you can see, if you're trying to think like Francesco Totti, he sees this brilliant amount of space in front of him. Toldo a little bit off his line, and who could have expected this? And it becomes probably, since 1982-83, the most iconic Roma goal that I would say. And, uh, and then following that, Totti makes it two. He gets his, he gets his uh, second off of a penalty kick. And one thing that, as I watch this video again, 
it's very funny because the Inter fans, he says it's, it's raining um, whistles and panini, and Inter fans and Ultras start throwing panini onto the field at the players. Uh, but this is, of course, after they give a standing ovation uh, following, that, following that chip. So that was, uh, you know, it's really something. It's those moments about, you know, just not just the goal itself, but how do the fans yeah. react? How does the stadium uh, intellectualize this moment? How does that become a memory, right? And it's like even, even the fans get up from both sides. And they're like, this guy, what are you going to say? You know, you got to give yeah. a dog a bone. And he did something remarkable at the, you know, at the iconic, probably most iconic Italian stadium. It's, it's incredible. I like when you mentioned uh, that it is about that moment of, you know, it takes it beyond just for a moment, because like you say, it went back to how it was, but for a moment it became young club loyalties. And it is that fact that people go to the stadium to watch football and watch their teams entertain them, sir, to them be entertained. But sometimes, you know, you can be entertained by the opposition. And this was one of those moments where, for me, it's one of the greatest goals I've seen in Serie A. Um, and it's against Inter, you know, I'd like to be able to say that, you know, Inter only concede goals of that nature, but unfortunately that's not the case. But, you know, when, like you say, he said stuff, you said like a ballerina, because he's so quick in, in, in those ways, he, he guides himself through. But a point to pick up on on that goal of why it's so special as well is Toddo is huge. Toddo is like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six. and you're right, he's off his line, but there's not a huge gap to get that, get that in, in the way he does. And I just can't, and I'm thinking if I'm at his angle, I mean, we see it from the camera angle at the top and you can see the gap. But if I'm Totti, I can't see that. I've got to guess that he's not going to be able to get back because you can't see exactly how much he's up his line. And to even attempt that is audacious. To score it is ridiculous. And to, to do it on that stage is monumental. And I think that, like you say, the game, oh, yeah, Adriano scores twice. And it, but it all gets a bit messy at the end as well. And I think there's a lot of aggravation that goes on with that. But, you know, I mean, even Totti, he says, um, when he was asked some time ago about his three favourite goals, he said that, you know, that and the lob against Lazio were probably one and two. And the, uh, what was it now, the left-footed goal against Sampdoria yeah. was, was number three. And you look at that and you can say, yeah. Um, and for a man who's scored so many goals, I mean, that, that, that's just, it, it is brilliant. Um, I think, you know, you certainly remember, well, I remember where I was when, when that one went in. And it's, um, yeah, I mean, like I said before, he listed the Inter team. You know, he didn't score this against, I don't know, Sud Tyrol or something in a Coppa Italia game, you know, and he just thought, well, with five mil up, I'm going to have a go. This was, this was different. So, so I just... It was a six foot five tall, though. Yeah, exactly. It was a six foot five tall, though. And I just think, how highly... And you said then that in Roma goals, it's probably up there. Off the top of your head, would you say it's number one? Or can you think of one that's, that's, that's better at this moment in time off the top of your head? No, I, th I think that's, that's number one. I think when uh, especially fans start to fall in love with him as a player, you know, maybe obviously in a nostalgic way now, that's the goal they point to. And I think the Lazio chip um, is up there. Also, the king of Rome is not dead goal which Richard Whittle uh, famously comment, commentated, that's, those are up there, but they come at a different point in his career. That's more of like a salvation, like, I'm truly not dead. I'm still an incredible player. I can play until forever versus <laughs> a, versus, um, you know, a 26, 27-year-old who just makes this incredible play, and they give him that little bit of space. That space is given to him out of respect because they don't know what he's going to do. And he finds a needle in a haystack by threading that. So that was like a moment of divinity, which mm. becomes truly trademarking him. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like you say, it, it takes a lot for, you know, the San Siro to applaud an opposition player. But, you know, that's, there's some goals where you can, feel a bit bitter or you know you look back and it's even when you you look and you think oh, how, did, how did they let that happen but with that I don't think that there's anything any uh, Inter fan can do but um, but applaud it so before we go um, is there anything else you want to say on that massive goal or uh, Francesco himself <laughs> we miss him and I think he can still play today if he wanted to and if he was given a contract I'm sure he'd go out there and try to pull off the same tricks and he'd get it more often than not <laughs> Yeah, I can believe you there. 
<laughs> right. Well, thank you, Wayne. We're going to be back pretty soon for uh, and share some more moments in, in Calcio. And um, if there's any of you guys who are watching who just want to send us something through that's uh, maybe it's a moment that you really remember especially, uh, we'll happily look back on that as well. So um, until then, it's uh, ciao for now.